with you, but mm. I mean, I understand some of your approach. I mean, mm. sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm. It helps us as politicians. Mm. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Be, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> <laughs> what you used to fan mm. uh, 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 charcoal. Mm. <laughs> you, right. you, you've seen it. Right. right. When you fan it, then I, the charcoal <laughs> bright red. This is a, uh, a, a, a core fan... accountability. <laughs> <laughs> you fan government's charcoal to <laughs> it's bright it's, red. It's a core fan accountability. I enjoy it. Johnny, first and foremost, let me take this opportunity. Of course, I haven't seen you for quite some time. You are doing a very good job for the Mother Ghana. Remain undaunted. This is our society, right. and it will take me and you. Mm. So that's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> <laughs> the general watches Johnny's Bite. Very, every day. Thank I you very much. And I was devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point, mm. factual. I'm fearless. Rahim. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh. You know, the be pressure joking. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you get gray hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan Karim to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. May Allah accept the last days of our fast good morning and welcome to johnny's bite the people's bite hashtag it tell them like it share it tell somebody that we are on a few weeks ago mr president good morning to you i came to you respectfully and and told you about the umac act the investor of media arts and communication that you through your minister for education at the time dr Matthew poku Prempe, with his deputy the uh, Honorable Osea Duchum had gone to Parliament to give us a good, a good, good, good reason why we needed the University of Media Arts and Culture, uh, Communication, sorry. And you have told us that it was important that we put the Ghana Institute of Journalism, the National Film and Television Institute, and the Ghana Institute of Languages together. Mr. President, are you aware that since you assented to that law in 2020, year 2020, UMAC, because officially, GIJ does not exist, NAFTI does not exist, and GIL does not exist. They are only colleges under this big umbrella called UMAC. Mr. President, are you aware that since you signed onto the law that they brought to you with your green pen, Mr. President, which was gazetted as well, the University of Media, Arts, and Communication does still not have a council. And I, I know that you know what the composition of the council is. You, all of them must be appointed by you, literally, as save the institutional representation. All of them, a chairperson nominated by the president, a vice chancellor, that's your job, Mr. President. The president shall make the nomination, two other persons nominated by the president, one of whom shall be a woman. I mean, literally, Mr. President, the job is on you because the SRCs of the various institutions are set. UTAG is set. All the other institutions are waiting for your appointment, Mr. President. And yet, Mr. President, since 2020, even though the investees are not legally, legally existent, they are still there without a head. What it means is that, Mr. President, they cannot take any major politi policy decision. In fact, the Ghana Institute of Journalism recently graduated after a long wait. People had completed their thesis, people had written all their exams, their IAs, people had fulfilled all, they satisfied all the requirements of the university, but because UMAC had not come and technically GIG was non-existent, if you will, in the eyes of the law, because there's no lame duck period within that GIG Act, when in the UMAC Act that says that, well, in the meantime, this is what we are going to do. So they are waiting for you, Mr. President. And last Friday, uh, uh, Thursday and Friday, students were graduated. Bachelor of Arts students and Diploma students, and then later the MA students were graduated. Guess who did the graduation? It was GTEC. And I thought that GTEC, as the institution that has the responsibility of monitoring and ensuring that the schools are doing the right thing, would have impressed upon you, Mr. President, to expedite your action of the appointment of the council members. Because the council is your job, it's your job to perform, Mr. President. 
But GTEC stepped in and graduated the students. I don't want to talk about the uh, event management hitches that went on at the graduation. But Mr. President, it is important that we don't get a future situation where people can go to court and challenge the certificates of, that are given to individuals. So Mr. President, I'm telling you and asking you respectfully again, after more than three weeks, I know you have heard it. Please, the lobbying that is ongoing, we are aware. I am aware that people are lobbying your offices and people are lobbying the minister. People are looking for the position. I am aware that people are running for it. Mr. President, we need a council because if the UMAC Ministry of Media, Arts and Culture and Communication does not have a council, it becomes problematic. They cannot take major policy decisions. And this would include even what kind of fees to charge, even what kind of projects they want to engage in or whatever it is. They are at a standstill, Mr. President, and they are calling on you. You told us you were a man in the hurry, Mr. President. You told us that you have the men. Of course you do. You told us that you don't want things to be done like it was done in the past. This has never happened in the past before. So it should not be happening under you, Mr. President. We need the UMAC Council now, Mr. President. The UMAC Council now. Mr. Education Minister, if you have not taken the list to the President, please take the list to the President now. That is your job. Because it is unfair to the students who graduated just last Thursday and Friday to have completed all the processes within the school and had to wait unnecessarily. Had to wait unnecessarily until GTEC stepped in. And I thought that GTEC, again, I'm saying it, I thought that GTEC would have rather insisted that the council be made so that they would engage you, Mr. President. But that didn't happen. Well, Mr. President, sometime in, I think, February or so, you mentioned that the Commander Sugar Factory was going to be operational. And we do know that the Commander area, the Ghana Museums and Monuments Board, tell us that between 1673 and 1974, the town of English Commander in the central region, the English expanded their lodge, which was built sometime in 1663, in a fort which they named the Commander Fort. Now in comes the Commander Sugar Factory which was an initiative to have us not import a grain of sugar or a cube of sugar. 1964, a visionary leader called Dr. Kwame Nkrumah had that in mind. Its operation grounded to a halt sometime in the 90s, 30 years ago, if you will. And that was due to poor management and technical issues. The sugar factory collapsed, and then the John Dramani Mahama administration had to bring it back sometime in 2016. And this was made possible because we had run out to the Indian Exim Bank to go and ask for a loan facility of about 36.5 million or so. Every grain of sugar and every cube of sugar we consume in this country today, if you are going to drink your tea, your cocoa, your Tom Brown, your uh, oats, whatever it is, we import. So Commenda was to change that narrative. But what happened? Politicization again. And the estimated numbers of people that were supposed to employ through direct and indirect jobs are going to be about 7,000 jobs. That was the estimate, 7,000 jobs. What was the argument? The argument was that the raw material which um, was going to be used for the production of sugar, which is sugar cane, was not present. So uh, sometime in 2016, it halted because we're saying that, oh, well, we don't have the sugar. And then if we don't have the sugar, the, the sugar cane, how can we produce sugar? And, da, 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 and, da, 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 and then we allowed the factory to rot for five years. Five solid years of politicization. Five solid years when we had a loan that we were paying interest on. So we're literally borrowing to service that, that loan. And we're literally borrowing to pay for what we are not benefiting from. Mr. President, not so long ago, your government said you were going to take up the benchmark values. One of the things among the 43 lists of items that you said you were going to ensure that you take the benchmark value so that you uh, uh, encourage local production was sugar. We do not produce sugar in this country. Every grain of sugar, every cube of sugar that we chop in this country, we import. And you know what that, that is doing? We are giving other industries and other countries money. When we have a factory that is sitting down, that could be producing for us, Mr. President. 
But you promised us, Mr. President, this is, this is how we are trying to bring back the, uh, what do you call it, the factory. And kudos to you for trying to take another look at it, even though belated. But I'm saying that you promised us that the factory was going to be activated by April. Because you had told us that, oh, all the technical work had been done and that by April production will start. Question I want to ask this morning is that, do we have the sugar cane? Do we have the outgrowers? What percentage of the sugar cane itself, as envisaged by Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1964, so that we don't have to depend on any other country in the world for our sugar? What percentage of the sugar itself is the Commander factory planting? Can he play the president's video for me? Yeah, Baba, I have some kiss here. In Bidum sit when you are here, who's look on that? Yeah, yeah. And I call back on Yami Adaroma, I feel the MC, Mama who said, It's a quam parcel, never in tea. Yeah, when you may say by April, April, no, Nanya Manson, so so so, a two year, be the quenim. Who call no more so so. Mama, I'm a professor. I say, acquire the government of Africa. Now, in my opinion, only commander access road to the secretary can. When the the full contract for the road itself is given, compensation will be built into it. I'm a professor. So anyhow, but for the traditional council, legal council, we have to see how we can help the traditional council as far as. As far as the bus is concerned. Mr. President, today is the 27th of April. You promised us, you promised the chiefs of Commander that we're going to have sugar produced in tandem with Osajifo's thinking as far back as 1964 when that factory was done. Danny, before you go to the sugar factory, there's an old newspaper pull out. Pull it out for me. And I'll tell you what... Even a military government at the time, even a dictatorial government at the time did. This was what they did. This is the daily graphic of Monday, February 12, 1973. It says, Regional Commander, Harvest Sugarcane at Commander, Manager in Army Custody. Now it says, Commander JK, uh, Commander JK Amedume, Central Regional Commander at the weekend, spent about two hours harvesting sugarcane at the Commander Sugarcane Plantation with 140 students of Agri Memorial Zion Secondary School, Cape Coast, to feed the Commander Sugar Factory. The students led by Mr. B.A.K. Griffin, Assistant Headmaster of the school, are members of the Voluntary Work Camps Association, the Boy Scout Association, of which I was a member once upon a time, and the Girls Guide Association. They were also co accompanied by six other masters and mistresses. Addressing the students before the harvesting, Commander Amedume uh, exalted the students as, as future inheritors of the land. The land is still there, but the factory is not functional. They should make hard work uh, and discipline their hallmark in order to help build a prosperous and morally strong nation. I can't talk about morality these days. He said the National Redemption Council attached great importance to voluntary service and commended the students on their efforts. Commander Mendebe said the Ghana has reached a stage in the history when everybody should realize that there's dignity in labor, blah, 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 blah. blah. So this was in 1973. 1973, I had to put this out from my archives. 1973, we were harvesting sugarcane in that same area. So where did the politics of we can't plant sugarcane there, the land is not good for sugarcane, the species of sugarcane that we... What is our CSIR doing? What, what are they doing? Our CSIR that has done a lot of research and giving people assistance even beyond the shores of this country. Why are we not engaging them? And I'm proving to you, Mr. President, that in 1973... We were planting sugarcane there. In 1964, when the factory was put together by Osajifu, we were planting sugarcane there. So, is it the case that there are people connected to political ties who are the big importers of rice and sugar in this country who are the ones who are drawing this plan back because they benefit from it and eventually comes to the political parties? Is it the case? Because every grain of sugar and every cube of sugar in this country is imported. And that's an indictment. When in 1964, we had envisioned, we had actualized it. We were producing sugar. Even the military leader, the dictators, they had seen the wisdom in it. 
Bossu, you promised us that sugar production will start in 8 April. Today is the 27th of April. No show. It should not be another promise and fail. You promise, you deliver. Because that was the mantra you gave us. That you promise, you deliver. You promise, you deliver. And have you noticed, Mr. President, each time you speak publicly, hashtag in promise strength? Have you realized it? Maybe you haven't. Pay attention. We need Commander Sugar Factory in order to employ 7,000 people for both direct and indirect jobs. We need a Commander Sugar Factory to be able to save forex for us and to consume what we eat and eat what we grow. That feeds directly into the Ghana Beyond the Aid agenda and that feeds into the concept of taking off benchmark values so that those who are profiteering from it against us and which is making the commodity so expensive on the market will be a thing of the past. That was the reasoning of Osajifo. That was the reasoning that Commander uh, Ahmedume followed. That was the reason John Dramani Mahama. And I'm happy that you still believe in it because you have gone back to repair and refurbish the factory that was left to rot, sadly. Because we procured that factory with loan from the Indian Exim Bank. So this is just a small reminder for you, Mr. President, that your promise to the chiefs, they sat there in full regalia before you. They even asked for a bus on that occasion. Bus there were him. So, Mr. President, I'm saying that if you can't give them the bus, at least, at least, give them the sugar factory. And I'll tell you something. Maybe you have not paid attention to the 2020 election dynamics. In 2020, even when you had gone there to start work on the sugar factory, beyond the charts that you had given at the Ghana map and showing us every district and what resources they have and what factories we could get there per the 1D1F concept, your party, your candidate, lost that election. Along the coastal line, when you are done all the wharfs, Right from after Volta region, come towards Tema, come towards Nungwa, come towards Teshi, comes towards La, come towards all those places. Did you see how many of your candidates lost around there? Mr. President, don't let them deceive you that all is well. If you promise, deliver. You promised Commander Sugar Factory, said it was going to be operational in April. Bosu, deliver. Good morning. Commander Sugar Factory have started. Actually, uh, it's been almost about 50 uh, from us. Since I was painting, as it was CCC, it's been a long time for the processing with the raw material. Now, Mr. President, I've grown this. 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 Original land now we are located for uh, our friend and uh, sugar factory, you no, know, about five thousand and over. No, see, see, ah, them land now about be here. If he, no, see, see, ah, commander man now was here. Then come on, find your sugar, sugar factory, you no. Know. Uh, Prot no ha sugar factory is ready. Nemo, on to me, nyafa, into 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 me,